In today's episode, we're gonna take three Mari stock materials and create what Einstein probably would have said a really smart material. To be able to do that, we need to go into the no graph. Let's take a look at some material concepts here now so we understand what we are dealing with. So if I, for example, create a material here, if I hit tab and say material, and if you didn't watch the previous episode where I took an already existing material and add to it, uh, I encourage you to do this first as well. So we have this option here where we create the material. You select the shader, and I'm gonna use principal BRDF here in my case. You have the option to create with default colors or without. So let's first create without, so we understand what's going on. If I go in here, control and double click on this one, you can see we have output nodes. And if I go back here, they correspond to this if I expand this one. Essentially, all of those nodes that we saw inside the material is essentially pointing to outside. So if I go here and say here, material, multi-channel material merge, like so, and select the same type here, and I go here and drag this one into the base. You can see it's auto-connected them all, and if I collapse this one, it looks like a single node, but essentially what it's doing under the hood is merging all of these and connecting all of the streams at the same time. And so if I now create another material and take a look at this one, but this one I want to create it with the default colors. And the default colors, if I go inside this material, is essentially hooking up whatever base value the shader has as expecting the default. So this one is essentially good to have when you create material, you have a starting point, at least you don't have transparency. So you either cancel or add the default behavior to a material. So I always encourage creating materials with the default colors on. Otherwise you might have issues when you want to blend materials. If you, for example, have a material that has a transparency and some don't, and they, you might get some erratic behavior unless this is what you want. Let's take a look here now how you would create a smart material. So a smart material is essentially two materials you can blend with an additional bake, for example, ambient occlusion or curvature. If I here go into my shelf and, and just drop down two of these materials that we can see here by default in Mari from the library, we're just going to take this one example here that we've done already in the layer workflow. We use this green here. We're also going to take now a steel material. And I want to blend these two together like this. Like we have this, the green metal rust. I'm going to have this on top and I'm going to have the steel in the bottom. And this is uh, what we're going to do here pretty soon here. And now here, if I would create a geometry channel like so and set this to curvature. So I already baked out geometry channels by going to the bakery and I made a complete episode about the bakery. So you can check that out if you want to. We pick this up here. The curvature is what we want. And we're going to use this one to blend between these two materials. So essentially where we have this white here, we're going to do a contrast operation. I'm going to insert a contrast. I'm going to start to level it and we can say here, where we want to level. So essentially we have the basic here for wear and tear. This one we need now to invert. So I'm just going to hit an invert, the tab and type invert, and we get an invert node like so. So here we have almost a smart material now, okay, guys, come on. So let's take a look here what's going on here. If I look at this one and type principal BRDF, we can see here we essentially have our edge con edge wear where we can essentially tell the, the edge where, where we want, how much of this we want, how contrasted we want this, if we want more or less, like so. So now we need to package this into a material. So what we can do here is to create a, uh, I'm just going to take these two materials, going to take another material like this material. I'm going to create it without the default colors. And it's going to be evident why here pretty soon. So I'm going to take this and copy this one so we can control C, go inside here and control V and paste it into this one. And now here I'm just gonna merge this one uh, into the top here and you see it auto connect. So now essentially I have a material that in term has two sub materials within this material. So now we can start to define the things that we want to be able to control here from outside here. And let's do that. We're gonna go into this material again and we can now start to look at these individual materials. So I have this green metal here and I want to be able to control the repeat. So you can see here you have this wrenches now on top of the material. So I'm just going to hit the wrench icons like so. I'm going to expose everything that's contained within this material. So now on, if I go back to the outside looking here, I can control the repeat of this base material there. 
So now we want to be able to expose the curvature operation. So you can imagine here what you can build with this workflow. Uh, this is essentially where the fund start using tallables and all kind of procedural workflows to alter the, the edge look here, essentially. It's good to name the nodes so it, it's evident what is going on here, because uh, when I expose this one there, for example, we have edge contrast and contrast. So now we can expose different parts here. So maybe we want to be able to invert this material. So maybe we have some reasons to inversion here. So I'm, I'm hoping that we get some switch nodes in the future so I can build more easily like on and off buttons. But in the meantime, using vanilla here, you can just uh, merge this. So you hit tab and merge. So you, you take the one of these here to the base, one of these here, the, the other result into the over. And then you go here from the output into the mask like so. So now we essentially made a switch here. So we switch this one by by moving the amount slider back and forward. So we can say invert mask, for example, and then we expose this one, the amount slider. Let's go back here and take a look here at the material like so. And now we can invert the mask. We can do the contrast operation and we can also do some tiling here of the material, rotate it and all of that. So essentially we could now extend further on this if you want to, for example, let's say that we want to have a a dirt material on top of this. So we can say uh, insert a multi-channel merge, multi-channel merge on top of this inside there. And let's take uh, some kind of dirt material, mud, for example, mud dirt. We drag this one in here. We br bring it into the over. And now we're going to have a, a essentially mud covering all of this. So imagine what we can do with an ambient occlusion. So we another geo channel. There we go. Boom, boom. Yeah, let's let's do this, shall we? Ambient occlusion. There you go. Let's pipe this into the mask and see here what happens. Like so, we want to do contrast and inversion there as well. So we essentially could just steal this setup here. So control shift control D to duplicate this out. And let's see here edge uh, contrast. I'm just gonna un expose these ones. Like so there. So now essentially I've done my contrast operation and I also inverted this. And now I'm just going to reset this one back and I hit the R buttons instead. So here we go. Yeah. So now it's up to us to build something that's interesting like so. So yeah, it, obviously you, you need to now go in here and and do some breakup so we can essentially take some textures. Let's see if I have some grudges here. Let's see here some grunge map that we want to apply. I'm just going to drag this in as a tileable map and see here. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. If I tile this a, a bunch of times. Let's uh, to take a merge and see here if I merge on top like so. I'm just going to stick this in here over like so. And, and do a uh, probably like an overlay or something. Contrast overlay and see here what we get. Let's move back here. Principal BRDF. There we go. So now we have the basis here for essentially a smart material. We have uh, edgeware and we also have some sort of dirt driven here. So we can go in here and further explore this. I'm going to actually toast this and do a different thing here, a brightness lookup instead. I'm going to try that. Like, let's do this, shall we? I'm going to go to my brightness lookup and I'm going to take this one, hit this one, um, like the curve editor and then go invert and then start to tweak here the look by doing this instead. So now we can essentially tweak the look with the curvature instead. Uh, we now just need to expose essentially the, the crucial parts of this one. I'm going to find another um, a grunge here. I'm going to take dirty paint. So you can see here what we have. I'm just going to tile this a bunch of times here. Five by five, like so. And let's do a contrast operation on top of this contrast, like so. We want to expose, we might want to expose this one, the, the curvature thing, thing on Bob there, and we want to be able to do some uh, dirt contrast, dirt contrast, like so. We want to be able to uh, the dirt pattern, and we want to be able to do some overlay, so dirt pattern, like so. We want to be able to control if it's overlay and the amount slider. We want to go in here and do some uh, repetition onto this guy as well. And let's see here what we have now in our material and look at this material. So we have in the bottom here, we have the, the material itself. We can go in here and invert the mask or not. We can have contrast like so. 
and we have dirt pattern overlay and we can do tile and repeat this okay so now we want to be able to repeat this we can control these two so they react as one sliders and we can do that by going here into the material and hit the p button and you see here we get this interface where we can link stuff so i'm gonna i'm gonna link this u and v repeat here so I'll link this one and say tiled scale like so boom now we have tiled scale they react as one there we can do the overlay like so and let's set it to multiply instead darken multiply like so and now we essentially get some uh, different type of uh, material here properties or dirt being applied depending on where we have this occlusion we can control the occlusion individually here as well let's see here if i turn turn my tile scale off here the dirt pattern off control this one we can see here how much we, we are applying this this dirt here on top and we can now start to fade in uh, like this to, to remove some of the dirt as well let's see here i think i lost this control for the edge wear there so let me see let's go in here and reintroduce that here like so i think i when i duplicated it and uh, i might have accidentally toasted that one so here we go now we have the edge contrast and i want to have the edge contrast above the dirt essentially following the order of how it's applied i'm gonna take the edge contrast and move this so i hit the p again take the edge contrast and hit the up button here until i'm getting it where i want it to be so it's going to be up above the invert mask there like so so we have the edge contrast as the edge where we have the invert mask and then we have the brightness lookup for the dirt so we can say we can go in here and say edit and say dirt map like so dirt map okay so i already did some additional work here and this is how it looks like now here so here in the base we can do some tiling here of the base material the green uh, painted one then we have this edge where here in the ui where we can say how much of this we can invert it if we want to do that you also have the breakup pattern here that you can add here on and off and you have blending mode for it and here's the actual breakout pattern and i swapped out the edgeware tileable here i created my own tileable so i can bundle this material so you can actually go in here and, and take a look so i'm gonna make a link where you can download this on my gum road and it's also gonna be free we have edgeware rotation offset and then we have this mud dirt here essentially where you can control how many repeats on the mud we also have a lookup here where you can say how much from the occlusion for example tweak this you also have here the breakup pattern here i'm using the same material uh, image here the tileable that i created you can then use that to break up the effect here if you want to and you have a blending mode here for example another scale for the breakup pattern if you want to control that and then you have a general tweak here on top of this pattern in, in the bottom here and inside here this is how it's look now we have the curvature and uh, the operations. This is essentially inversion of the edge wear. This is the breakup uh, pattern for the edge. And then I'm clamping the mask here and it feeds into this multi shell merge. This one is a dirt on top and the edge or essentially the application here of the occlusion, how much of the occlusion and, and the pattern and all that. Okay. If you stumble in here by an accident, I'm gonna link here a playlist. So this is more non-commercial for the beginner. So let's check it out and be there or be square.